DVZ. Uh, we're just going to follow Snoot into his next game just because it's ready, it's starting, and just because we want to keep you guys with some action. Like, we're moving through games so quickly here today, but I do just want to make sure that we bring you guys the, uh, you know, as much StarCraft as possible. And it feels, it makes sense, I feel, to go into this DVZ rather than trying to just jump around into something different over the next few moments. It's a beautiful day outside, by the way, in England, for once, in the north of England especially. Well, I don't know about the south of England, because I'm not in the south of England. But it's a beautiful, sunny day. And for once, it isn't too windy, so it's not, like, stupidly... Like, it's not, like, sunny, but, like, freezing cold when you go outside. It's actually somewhat pleasant. It's almost as though we're, like, trying to have a summer or something. Let me introduce these players, as we do have a hatch first on both. Nothing too crazy will happen, as we are back on Proxima Station as well. To the top right hand side from Team Liquid, it is Snoot. And he is going up against the Blue Zerg player to the lower left hand side of the map from is Imber Armani. So, we'll just uh, again like to say hello to you all and uh, of course thank you all for joining us. If this is maybe your first time on the stream, then well, do let us know. Always excited to see whenever there's uh, new people tuning in for the first time ever. And of course, if you are enjoying the stream, don't forget there's a follow button too. You can see when we go live in the future with more StarCraft 2 events and content. We're streaming live every single day here, pretty much uh, until me. You know, maybe I need a break one day now and then, but we try and stream live every single day. And so far this month, it's going uh, pretty okay. We have been live every single day of May so far. Were we live at the end of April too? Perhaps. I think we might have been. Um, I think we might have been alive at the end of April. We've been live for a lot of days in a row anyways, is what I'm trying to say. So lots of StarCraft content coming your way on this uh, channel, and um, yeah, just uh, thank you very much for joining me. Of course, if you do really enjoy the content and want to support, then some great ways to do so are subscribing. We're currently 11 subscriber points, uh, or subs, away from the new Wardy, uh, Wardy Thumper mode, so that's coming soon if we can build up a few more subs. Obviously, outside of that, you can donate directly if you prefer. You can cheer in the chat, which gets yourself a bit badge. We do do regular replay packs, and actually we'll be sending out a replay pack in the next couple of days, including the replays from today's matches, as well as replays from the other events we've cast so far throughout May. And outside of all of that, you can uh, also get involved in our sub-tournaments and other bits and pieces too. So uh, if you're interested in supporting, subscribing is a great way to do so, but again, donations and cheers available as well if you'd like to uh, if you'd like to support in other means. What's up, Vader Angel, by the way? How you doing, man? Sorry, I couldn't say hi to you in the last game. So much going on. So much happening throughout the early stages. Um, it was an interesting ZVZ, the last one. Both games were very, very interesting, so... What's up? I'll say hi to you now just before we kick into Link Speed here from Armani. Snoot has once again opened, uh, opening Hatch Pool Hatch here on Proxima Station. It's kind of funny because Hatch Pool Hatch is in a lot of ways very safe um, against a lot of um, a lot of different builds just because of the fact that you actually have the extra hatchery up in the back, which actually helps a lot with production early to sort of keep you safe against uh, you know earlier pools. Obviously, you have to micro well, etc. But it's actually surprising how well Hatch Pool Hatch can do against early aggression. Obviously, in this scenario, I'm not seeing any early aggression at all, and I'm just going to be seeing actually a fast lair from Armani, which could be seen as early aggression. He's on four gases, so looking towards Aspire as this finishes up. Just going to rush up into those Mutalisks and play that from the get go. So, Aspire does drop on down here. I think we saw Impact obviously playing with the Aspire as well, but it was done very differently though. Going up into the free bases and then playing some, you know, playing the Roach upgrade into the Aspire. Very, very different to uh, this opening that we're seeing right now if the Spire just starting up right away. Lair on the way up as well, of course, on the main base. So, uh, gets this set up and ready to go for himself. This Lair is a pretty nice way to just uh, get established here, get set up, see what's going to happen. Plus one missile attack as well from Snoot coming on down. And again, I mean, we talked about the Spire already. There's a Roach Warren and an Evo Chamber from Armani. And, uh... Yeah, just nothing really too ridiculous, too crazy, I would say. As we see a few Roaches coming in, just going to help to push a couple of those Zerglings back here. And uh, keep them at bay for now. Stay at bay. Do not come close. We shall attack you. <laughs> um, 
yeah, Retron coming up as well. I mean, basically, we're just seeing two different ways of kind of setting up into ZVZ mid games. Middlers versus the the Roach play from the get go, and it's not even confident enough to commit into plus one Carapace as well. So, gonna go into double upgrades, which isn't something you see all the time as Roaches. And Snoot is, uh, he saw the later third hatch here. And I think seeing the ha third hatchery at this sort of timing, it is very late. And because it is very late, we're going to see the Hydralis then coming down because I think he just re recognizes that this is potentially going to be Middleus from his opponent. So, feels as though Snoot is setting up very nicely indeed. As soon as the Mutas come out, they will start to look towards picking off some overlords. I mean, Snoot must know because he's pulling overlords back and everything. So, whatever it is, he's been able to pick up on the fact that this is Mutalisk. And so he's picking off Overlords and all the rest of it too. There's a Queen to the side here just pushing that Overseer all the way over to the right. Roaches and Queen will pull away from the front. And Snoop will start to build up some Spore Crawlers. I mean, he actually already had them up in the main and natural coming up. So he's, uh, he's, he's again looking to be very well defended. Seven Hiders on the way also. Yeah, actually, Snoot's going to be in such a great position against this. Like, Armani will do really very little with these meters. Like, he'll pick off a couple of drones right now in this mineral line. But past these couple of drones, that's basically all he's going to get done. As we uh, see the meters going to try and uh, fly in and pick enough a couple of uh, drones now. So a little bit more damage being done. Again, the extractors taking some hits from these mutalists as well. And you'll see the sport just going to relocate into a slightly more favorable position to push mutalists away as well. Oh, two of them going down. Well, with Hydra's kind of in play as well already from Snoot. He's just going to keep moving across the map, and you can see Armani trying to go into a Lurker Den. This is obviously a very kind of common thing to try and do in uh, Korea at the moment, like uh, Mutalisks into Lurkers. But, you know, it's just not working out because Snoop realizes that he's going to attack, and one of the things you just can't afford to have happen here as Armani is to be attacked. Snoop has 1 1 upgrades against 0 0. I mean, the Mutals will come, turn around and come back home. The Hydras will start talking them down. Is there enough Hydras? They're actually still fighting against Roaches. This is maybe not going as neatly for Snoot as, uh, as I thought it would. As uh, we're going to see the mutas eventually will clean up, more spines will finish too. And soon it will be forced to just throw down an infestation pit. And again, we'll have lurkers to play against very, very shortly. And obviously, he doesn't make it in towards the main base or anything, so he doesn't see the Hydra Den milfing into a lurker den or anything. It's uh, just blind play so far for our uh, Red Zerg who comes in. We'll take down one Overlord here, another Overlord taking some hits will also fall. As the Fumi does turn around, they do a little bit of damage here to the uh, hatchery. Just uh, picking away at that for just a couple of moments. Again, some more Hydras just gathering up together and Roaches as well, just coming towards the uh, front. Now, Overseer is going to get popped instantly by that uh, Spore Crawler. Nice little uh, pick off right from the get go. And a couple more Ravages just morphing in at the back here, going to get ready to. Keep on pushing forwards as Armani's still looking for that opportunity to try and just do a little bit more of something here. Hydras will indeed push those Mutalists back. I mean, okay, so this is the bigger push, and there is going to be some Lurkers available. Snoot does not have a Overseer here. As you're going to see, the Lurkers on whole position until these units are right on top of them. Snoot just has no idea at all. The Lurkers are waiting, and now they will strike, and that is going to be a mess of death for uh, units here for Snoot. I think it took him a while to even realize those lurkers underneath this. And now he loses so, so much. A roach almost going down. I'm going to see another extractor being taken. One roach peels away to the side where he'll start to work his way through this hatchery. And, uh... Yeah, let's try to pull his way through this hatchery and, uh... Ah, I mean, Snoot obviously will now add an overseer. Immediately again a hive. We never saw him really needing to get into Hive Tech last game. He sort of dealt with the you know aggression of his opponent no matter what. But it is kind of the way you want to get you know want to get set up into. Otherwise, it does uh, put you into a bit of a tough spot to kind of deal with lurkers as the game continues on. Especially as Amani right now is just going to sit back on four bases. This is kind of what I expected uh, Impact to do in the last game. Um, and Armani's doing it right now, but again, I mean, eventually Vipers come up, and that will slowly allow Snoot to trade with this. And we'll see how it goes uh, at that point. Snoot could pull around, work his way through those rocks, open up the attack path in towards this fourth. Problem is, I mean, it's still a pretty quick rotation for, you know, Armani to just pull his, uh, you know, pull his uh, lurkers over here and position them anyways. As, uh-oh, Snoot, is he getting uh, stuck in a corner? He is a little bit. He's a little bit closer to those hide uh, lurkers than I think he'd like to be. As Lurkers can keep on pushing forwards. Hive only just now about to finish. 
So new with only a couple of Ravagers in play, doesn't have a lot of Corrosive Bows or anything he can utilize. Actually loses one of the Ravagers too. Two Vipers on the way up. Students with a lot of minerals at the moment, but again, maybe not as many um, much gas as he would like to utilize here. For his own liver bile. Still trying to dodge away from those lurkers. And again, I mean, and the problem with the Snoot, I guess, in a way also, is the fact that the initial Vipers, two of them are not instantly going to kill all of these lurkers. No, I mean, two of them will abduct one, abduct the other. But we'll not just straight up kill them. We're going to see these infestors here. We'll have to be careful as the lurkers keep on advancing forward through the center. And Snoot, obviously feeling a bit more confident now. Hits a nice fungal growth. Only one bile, though. Again, missing out on gas, and so his Ravager camp really is struggling. Vipers trying to get what they can. I mean, I think he might just go for one larger fight. And just go for the, um, with this kind of larger fight, just go for the kind of blinding clouds on the lurkers rather than, you know, I think he just has to, rather than, like, abducts forwards, which is what he might oftentimes try to see. Does he still not have an overseer with this? Oh, man. Maybe he just lost it a few moments ago. Now, though, he's in trouble. These units in the back of the mineral line are getting uh, picked off, and Snoot will lose the gold base. Playing patiently, still getting some more energy on the Vipers. Blind Cloud is 100 energy apiece, so if he could go in with four Blinding Clouds, he could pretty much kind of nullify every single vi uh, every single Lurker from this engagement. He does have full energy Vipers, so that's going to be his play now. He is up two Carapace upgrades, remember, so in terms of a straight-up fight, he's actually going to do pretty okay. Pretty decently. Lurker's going to come in position over here once again. Snoot just wants to rush into this, and again, well, this is actually nice. Uh, his opponent's Lurker's uh, kind of siege up quite, uh, in quite a stacked sort of format. You can see Snoot will have to cancel the base on the right-hand side. He's trying to retake the gold. He's still not engaging in. I really thought at this point he would be. What did he use his Viper energy on? No, he still has Viper energy. He's just not using it. He'll go now. Blind Clouds on both the Lurker packs. And that's a pretty huge play by Snoot. This should be a fight that begins to go his way. He's picking off Hydra's reinforcement to the left side very convincingly as well. And Snoot actually just has a lot more Hydra's behind this army too. This is going so nicely for him. Again, those Vipers with the clouds on top of all of the Lurkers. That's exactly what we've been talking about. It's been the exact scenario we've been expecting as this will be a dead hatchery. 300 minerals down the drain. But again, minerals is not the issue for Snoot right here. Gases, which is, you know, a big kind of side effect to losing the gold base as well. You know, losing this fourth is definitely going to hurt him. But now Snoot? Well, now Snoot has this position where he's just taken a huge lead. I mean, obviously he just took a very good fight. He t completely destroyed the Lurkers. And now what does Armani go for? Well, what's back at home? He does have a couple Lurkers, but not too many. Like, two of them is really just quite a low number here. I love this, by the way. Just burrowing forwards. If he can burn burrow on top of both Lurkers, he's just going to kill them instantly. There is an Overseer here now, though, from Armani, and so Snoot has to back away in Burrows, and will just go running. It was not really a pretty position for him. Obviously, maybe he wasn't expecting his opponent to have an Overseer there, ready to go. I mean, Hive's coming in from Armani as well. Snoot going into plus three missiles and plus three Carapace, really just making the most out of this composition he has so far. And uh, just, you know, because he has Hive, he may as well go into those upgrades. Hive isn't something you see all the time in ZVZ, not so quickly anyways. One Lurker abducted. We'll look for something else. Actually, abducts a Ravager. Obviously, an expensive pickoff. If he gets it, it doesn't go down. Nice save by Armani running it back there. I mean, over again, the Vipers will just allow Snoot to play so efficiently throughout the upcoming engagements. And that's why Armani kind of gets away with being on 16 more workers right now. The extra hatchery already, for example. Some chain drains running on forwards, looking to see what's going on. The Lurker revealing itself there. As it uh, fights against those changes. Snoot actually going to throw down a whole ton of spines just to make this position pretty much unengageable. As we're going to see, well, he really doesn't want to fight, apparently. Pulling very far back. The uh, Viper's going to abduct a uh, Lurker here. And then some Blinding Clouds just to, again, help his position. Doesn't want to run into him them himself, though. And he will just burrow his Roaches to get them healed back up nice and quickly for the next fight. Yet again, as Armani's still pr trying to pressure on through, tr trying to go for an attack. I mean, Snoot is getting those upgrades, though, and with the extra upgrades finishing, that's going to help him massively. You can actually see an Unburrow here, so Mune's going to move over to the left side. The rest of the units from Armani. Thinking about where they want to go as well, they're actually going to see... Uh, sort of move over to the right. They took him a while, but he does get there in the end. And we'll see that uh, small call that was building just getting picked off with these Roaches. Going to be in trouble, going to get chased... Oh, he's actually going to pick up some more drones with it, so... They don't go down as quickly as I thought they would, but again, Armani finds himself kind of... You know, running into, well, not quite a brick wall. Don't know quite what spine crawlers are made of. Doesn't look like bricks, but it is a wall of spine crawlers that is just not going to allow Armani to realistically engage in any of these positions. 
Viper here just want to be careful. There's Hydras in this army, so the last thing he wants is to lose a uh, Viper for no reason. But Snoop's going to create a surround out of this engagement. Still very cautious with the Vipers, like not using Blinding Clouds or anything here. Um, maybe just looks to kind of abduct some of the Ravagers forwards. There we go, Ravagers going to get abducted in. I mean, this army, though, is going to be completely trapped. I mean, where is he going to go? He's going to basically run up towards the upper right-hand side. The idea for Armani right now is that if he can just sort of pull Snoot out of position, maybe he can hit at the front. Armani, his entire bank has just been spent, and so that in you know, extra economy lead he's had throughout the game is uh, now going to start disappearing just because Snoot's trading well enough. This was actually not enough units from Snoot over here, and he will uh, lose this fight, unfortunately, for him. It's a little bit of a weird one to lose out on as roaches will continue their way through these rocks. So rocks being dropped right now. And we also be seeing the uh, again this just sort of pathway being opened up. Roaches are Snoot gonna move on forwards as well. Look to see what else they might be able to get up to here. A couple of changes of Armani actually blocking Snoot's reinforcements. Man, this army in the back is doing way more than it ever should do. Like, th there is no reason at all that Armani should have initially gotten these units to stay alive in the first place. Snoot just really kind of, uh, not really kind of, just kind of missing the kind of, uh, kind of the numbers game, I guess. The roaches do move on through, and those roaches will get picked off. And still Snoop playing so passive. Well, here come the uh, Lurkers once more. You can see Spines poking away at them initially, and actually getting quite a lot of damage done to these initial Lurkers. Uh, very nearly killing one or two of them. Again, it's going to be the Blinding Clouds to try and save the day. One, two, to the south side. There's Lurkers as well, though. Lurkers already just trying to pull backwards. There's more Blinding Clouds available now, abducting forwards as well. Cross of Bowels picks off a couple. Now Snoop will have to back away, probably get energy back on his Vipers before he goes yet again. But again, Armani just takes another trade, which is not keeping him in this game. Now 6,000 resources lost down. Again, he's been leading the income tab for a good few minutes here. But it's getting to that point where Snoot just needs one more fight, and he's going to be in a fantastic position. I mean, the fact that Snoot has 3-3 free free obviously helps as well. I mean, Armani is slowly getting in towards that point. It's the whole reason he built a hive of his own. He hasn't been building that hive for any other reason up until now. As we just have the top side base being taken as well. Snoot continuing to expand, continuing to just open up opportunities for himself. I mean, Armani also expanding here as we're 18 minutes into game one of the ZVZ. Snoot and Armani currently throwing everything at each other. Well, I should say Armani throwing everything at Snoot. Snoot is uh, sitting back quite passively, quite patiently, and just taking the fights as they come. We'd love to see a single transfuse just on this Viper, just make it a little bit more durable during the uh, upcoming fight. Those Hydras have been actually putting good damage off it onto, onto Vipers, and we have seen three Vipers so far this game being taken down, so... I mean, it's not a lot, and he's killed 17 Lurkers in the process of having these Vipers. I almost forgot that uh, Armani at some point in this game actually had uh, meters of his own. It's actually how this opened, very fast middleist into the Lurker play. Big uh, Roach run by from Armani comes through the south. Snoot will uh, set up as well. He's uh, actually looking to see if he can engage into some sort of uh, position here. These roaches could do a lot, man. Snoot has no overlord watch in this high ground. And that's uh, maybe going to cost him just a little bit. And as you can see, uh, the main army of Snoot will push on through. Crops down a couple of uh, uh, blinding clouds right at the back here. I mean, he's got so many units that the, the lurkers aren't really going to matter. But in the meantime, Snoot again is going to perhaps take a lot of damage. And so he has to decide what he wants to do right now. He's going to get rid of this base. But does he go back home? Or, you know, what is the plan? Again, he doesn't really have a wall of spines anymore, so it looks like he'll just take down a base and then come over this direction. Love this by Armani. He knows Snoot killed off these rocks, so he's going to get in towards the natural very quickly. Snoot actually going to lose out on the Rotron. And Armani, great uh, you know, great little play because, again, I mean, while Snoot has uh, done a good job of kind of doing damage across the map, he did lose a lot of workers here, and actually Snoot only has 28 workers left. And Snoot's also now going to be dragged all the way back into his main and natural. And that's going to allow Armani to come and hit the external base of Snoot, whereas Snoot was only really at the forefront of uh, Armani's base. Armani's units were always in a position to then defend his own bases, so this was a really cute game of positioning by Armani. And this run by did way more than it did of Snoot, just because of the kind of angles he was able to hit at. As he does push away most of those roaches, he'll chase down all but one of them. And this army of Armani is still moving forward, suddenly Snoot is without a gold base as well. Now Snoot's army supply is way up, so while he's just lost pretty much all his economy, he can rebuild those bases, and he can survive for a while off of the bank he already has and the army he already has. In fact, he might just still win this game off of what he already has set up here. So, 
this is not over from Snoot. I mean, it's it's not been a nice couple of moments, but he has still traded away against a lot of those, uh, you know, roaches of his opponent and all the rest of it. Lurkers here will still be a key feature for Armani as we see the Vipers think about how they want to engage. Still being very cautious about the Hive lists and again I think Snoot is going to rebuild this hatchery here. Just going to say to himself, well okay, you know what, I'll give you uh, I'll give you a few moments to kind of set up and uh, we'll both just sit back. But again, I mean as he sits back, Armani is rebuilding the bank now. He's maxed out yet again. And I mean Snoot again, because he's on the low work count, will still have more army supply on the map at any point of time. It's actually a very interesting feature of ZVZ where sometimes one player has way more drones and so they basically look to fight and then re-engage with a second army afterwards. Whereas the other player looks to kind of just win one fight with a landslide victory. As uh, Snoot at this point maxed out. Let's see how this fight goes. Initially a couple of Ravagers in the front going to go down. Cross of Bows do lava Snoot's army. He has to be very careful about that. As the Vipers will again be looking for their opportunity in the next few moments. Vora being used once again just to repair rep some of these roaches, let them heal up a little bit faster before the engagement. And while he's still just sort of hanging back, now he's going to take his gold base, which is something he's yet to mine from this game. Roach run by to the right side as well, so it really needs like an overlord or something over here. He just needs a way to watch this position, however, he actually realizes that Armani's units are out of position. He's, ooh, loses the Viper though. Snoot going to come in from two angles. Well, this is obviously one way to minimize the effect of those lurkers. Great blind and cloud on top of them as well. And Snoot, uh, he has to push down a ramp still. And he is going to start losing the fight to the left-hand side. The corrosive bows of Armani. Will they be enough to hold on? Well, no, is the answer to that. Snoot actually drops heavily in supply. Again, losing more workers across the map to these roaches that are running by. But Snoot is just taking such convincing fights with this large army as it stands that there's still maybe no way for Armani to make this happen. Corrosive Bows will not quite cancel those roaches. And as he pushes on through here, Armani needs to find a way to gather everything together. Actually, somehow Snoot has units in the main. Don't know how they got here at all. Actually, I have no idea. If Snoot can just pick off the reinforcements before they all gather up together as one, then he should be able to make this happen still, despite the fact that he is basically completely all in with this push. I mean, his last few drones are starting to be picked away at. Snoot will turn and fight. Now he's fighting two different fights, which is basically the opposite of what he wants to do, I think. And you're going to see those roaches going to unburrow on top of the Ravagers over here. It's always a nice little thing as well. Snoot's still maintaining a small army supply lead, but it is really, really quite small now. And uh, Armani is going to... Again, just be trying to gather his units together. Snoot with two drones left on the map. These few roaches have just killed off absolutely everything. How many kills have some of these got? 3, 10, 12, 7, 11. They've really had a great time. But again, the issue is... Oh, Cross of Biles take down three Ravagers. I mean, that's a huge loss from Snoot at this stage of the game. The Biles are going to be so important. As here we go, Armani will wrap around from the top side as well. And that's going to mean the Ravagers are exposed. The Viper not really able to do anything. Doesn't have energy. It's Snoot that types out GG. And Armani will take it versus Armani has only just begun. We're on Abyssal Reef once again. It was uh, the same two maps we saw between Snoot and Impact. So obviously players still uh, enjoying playing on the, the maps that kind of came through the last map pool. Or from the last map pool. And survived to make it through into this new current map pool. Bottom right hand side we're going to see the 13-12 from our Team Liquid player in red. It's Snoot. And he's going up against the blue Zerg to the top left-hand side from his Ember, Armani. Got some confirmation for you guys, by the way, that the semi-final matchup on this side of the bracket will be against Hero. So the winner of this quarter-final will play Hero in the round of four. Which is exciting. It's, ex it's very exciting, right? Very exciting indeed. So, uh, looking forward to seeing how uh, how that turns out and see who is going to be playing against Hero in that um, in that series. What's up, Dark Ones? Thank you very much for the cheer. 101. Takes down Dovenwolf, the big boss. Farewell, Dovenwolf. He gets blown on up. Dark Ones, the new big boss. Thank you very much, dude. Appreciate it. And well, it is Pool Hatch Gas from Armani, so not the best start when you're a Snoot fan. So this time, by the way, not going to pull out a gas and go for, you know, the hatchery follow-up or whatever. He's just going to keep on building zerglings and mining gas for the bane nest very, very soon. So he's going to go very, very aggressively and all in with this, you know, no bane in nest follow-up or anything. Let's see if Snoot can make this work. The problem is the initial lings are going to be greeted by lings of Armani as well. They're already out from the production tab. They're finished. 
and they're going to be waiting. So this is not looking to be great right away. It's just going to run up a ramp into a concave of lings and instantly realizes he has to turn around. We'll try to reposition, but getting the concave of his opponent is just going to be a little bit too good. Armani just continues to sit up this ramp and continue, continuing to defend. And that Bane is coming up as well here as you're going to be seeing Snoot soon. We'll be uh, looking towards the uh, Bane based aggression, but I mean, Armani buying himself so much time for a spine crawl to come up and to get ready to fight against this. Obviously, Snoot will be very reliant on these Bane connections then. As Lings of Armani feeling confident coming down the ramp. We look to see what they can get up to. The Ling's actually going to start fighting here. He's going to do a good job. We'll lose one of his Banes, but he's going to trade very well with these Zerglings. Armani's going to lose a lot. Spinecrawler currently not burrowed, coming down the ramp at the moment. We'll just use it as a way to block the Queen, but obviously it means that this, uh, you know, the Spine isn't really doing anything. It means it's going to get instantly surrounded, and now the Spinecrawler will begin to die. So the Spinecrawler can't get anywhere. Drones think about pulling off the line. Another two Banes are going to come up the ramp. And they're obviously going to look to try and help out as well. One goes off towards the spine crawler. One helping there with some zerglings too. He's going to try and get the queen. You kill the queen, you get rid of injects. You get rid of injects, you're keeping your opponent at bay in terms of production. Snoot actually starts up four drones at this point. Hasn't really killed any workers himself, but will force another spine to build. Obviously just feels as though it might be a better time for him to move in towards some drones. I mean, he's still going to apply pressure. He still has a couple of banes morphing in. And he still has a link speed advantage over his opponent. And those two Banes of Armani will be crucial now to uh, make sure you can sort of survive this next wave of attack. Snoot in the meanwhile throws down the third hatchery and, well, two Banes leading the charge. Going to go up the ramp. He sees the Banes of his opponent will be actually cleaning out a Zergle there right away. Actually, he forces one Bane to be used immediately. Really, really nice. He's going to look to pick off another one. As it then tries to throw the uh, lower health uh, Baneling onto that Bane right there. Snoot with a little bit of a misplay. Losing a bit more and still is looking to see what else he can do. Trading out Ling's Banes. I mean, he's just trading out nice and effectively. What he does do here is he slows down Armani's production and Armani's kind of rate of uh, units, uh, which just allows him to kind of, you know, basically be a bit safer against the counterattack to keep on droning a little bit further. And as Armani makes more Ling's, you gotta remember as well, he has not got Zergling speed, and so Snoot probably knows this with the amount of Banes that have come in here. He probably knows there's no Ling's speed, and so now he's in this bit of a position where, as Armani comes across the map, Snoot is actually sat. Pretty comfortably, pretty safely um, against this. Like, he shouldn't really be too afraid or worried at all. And as you can see, that Baneling drops on down. And these Ling's just going to continue to move down in towards the lower right hand side of the map to uh, try and do a bit more damage. So, one Bane goes down instantly, and just going to be seeing ooh, another Baneling getting taken down also. Some drones being pulled on in, and again, Ling's going to fight against each other, actually picking off that Queen here in the end. As the two Banelings continue to move on through, and Snoot going to be uh, defending against this. So, yeah, he loses a queen, but again, I mean, he's taken himself in the most part of this game, I think, into a little bit of a, an advantage. It's a little bit back and forth between income right now. Armies are pretty even. Yeah, it's going to be pretty even overall, I guess, between the players. Armani invests uh, some gas in towards a lair. So he's going to throw a lair down here right away. Get that set up and ready to go. Overlord's on the way from both players on either side of the map as well. And Snoot just pulls a drone over to the right hand side here where he's going to throw down a hatchery. With a third hatch on the way up, of course, things still continue to look pretty great so far from our uh, Red Zerg player from Liquid Snoot. Just run a uh, Ling by. Actually, forces a Bailin to be used on it, so. That's nice. Doesn't see the lair though, so he's missing out on information, but. Again, I mean, for getting the Bane, it's still a, you know, it's still a pretty, um, reasonably fair trade, I suppose. As I do see the plus one missile attack upgrade going to be uh, thrown down here on the Evolution Chamber. And again, stood just a little bit later in terms of this switch into the mid-game units. Uh, AKA the Lair, I guess the Lair comes down later, the Rotor on the Evo Chamber. But at the same time, he is, um... Well, at the same time, I mean, he is taking a faster third hatchery. That's always something you've got to consider. And he is in a little bit of a drone lead. So actually, for the most part, here, Snoot is still, you know, holding advantages. It's just his uh, fighting army will be a little bit weaker at slight moments. So he'll just want to be a little bit cautious about that here and there. And we're going to be seeing this hatchery. Again, just dropping on down and setting on up. So Creep going to continue uh, pushing out over the left side here. We're going to be joining up very shortly. Some drones are going to start mining away on the third base, and 
Again, plus one missile attack on the way up from both players. Roach speed is about just over halfway down, and the roach speed as well from Snoot is just starting. So the question becomes, Armani, who has stopped droning more or less and starting to build roaches, is he really just going to commit to this big one plus one roach attack? Well, if Snoot stops droning now and 55 drones and a good saturation of the third base, you can pretty much already see that Snoot is massively starting to fall in favour. You know, you know, income is starting to fall massively in favour of Snoot here already, so... He's already kind of going in towards this massive income lead, so all he needs to do is work the defender's advantage, which is going to be positioning. You know, he can set up in towards concaves against, you know, convexes, you know, choke points. So he can get into a better fight in that regard. And just because he's got, you know, faster reinforcements, the lack of a roach speed won't really uh, affect him here at all. As these roaches do gather on up over to the right-hand side towards the third base. You see a whole bunch of roaches here moving through the center for Armani as well. A couple lings do nibble away on these rocks and just going to be seeing the uh, rocks getting taken down. And Snoot, again, will be uh, just excited up into defender's position. I mean, how far until his plus one finishes? Ten seconds or so? Yeah, he's going to be fine. And behind this, Armani isn't completely committing to it. You know, he's throwing down a plus two missile attack upgrade. He isn't making more roaches. So all Snoot has to do is deal with this initial wave, push it back, and he's going to be completely fine. His plus one finishes bang on time to defend. And that's going to be... Uh, Snoot very easily pushing this back, and well, how far does he push forward? It's probably not too far. He needs to make sure he starts up the plus two missiles as well. I mean, Armani will already hold a 40 second or so advantage on that regard. And again, upgrades and mirror matchups especially are so, so important because it can just make the difference of the engagements. You know, if you're both going into the fight with the same number of units, a similar sort of position, and micro in the same sort of way, where if one person is dealing more damage per connection from each roach, then obviously they're the one that's going to kind of just have the time of their lives in the fight. So uh, the upgrade is important, but Snoot gets it nice and quickly, which again means at any point of this game, he's only going to have to stall for 40 seconds or so to be able to then have an even fight on his hands. Snoot going for the very European style of play as well for the infestation pit. He's going to be throwing this down and getting some infestors on the way up, of course, and as those infestors start to come into play, We'll create that uh, opportunity here for Snoot to, um, again, just kind of, you know, add those utility units to his kind of toolkit now for the rest of the game. I mean, having two or three infestors, the value you can get out of those in Roach versus Roach, we didn't really see it on Proxima because he got a couple of infestors against Muters and they got picked off and he used them here and there, but we never really got to see, like, a true Roach on Roach War. In this regard, you know, if few infestors are really going to be going a long, long way, the fungal growths they can get to can lead into great corrosive bars, great trades in that regard. Hydro then thrown down from Armani though, also turning claws and burrows, so he's starting to invest into a lot of potential harassment play style, and then maybe using that harassment as a way to delay and to buy time for the Lurker Den once again, potentially. I mean, he may just want to play Roach Hydra, which isn't the most common way to play though. I think Lurker Den seems to just be the way to play in Korea at the moment in ZVZ, and there it is, the Lurker Den begins to morph on in. So Lurkaden starts to come into play. Roaches and Ravages do gather themselves to the right side of the map here. And there's some of these roaches from Armani just going to be gathering up towards the center. And getting a little bit of Roach Ravager in the back here from Armani too, thinking about where it wants to go. And Snoot just uh, pushes on forwards and is going to be, again, able to really just push those roaches away to the left side for now. So he pushes those back and, again, just we're going to see the plus one carapace coming up from Armani as well. These roaches just burrow and pull away. A little bit of uh, harassment everywhere. Uh-oh, Snoot gets uh, his initial kind of few units surrounded here. This is a little bit awkward. Um, Snoot's going to have... I mean, Snoot has straight up more army supply. Does he have units? So he's got roaches coming into position. He knows these roaches are here. Okay, so he's going to start dealing with that. And he has got roaches. I mean, they're not immediately next to... You know, nearby, but they're not massively far away. They're not all with the main army. But Snoot's actually mostly just going to start pulling back, which is going to again give Armani the chance to move into that Lurker Den. And that Lurker Den can of course just create so many opportunities as these roaches do pull away to the side of the base. I mean, these uh, burrowed roaches are so annoying for a reason. And the idea here is that uh, these burrowed roaches is, ooh, that's a nice fungal to create an engagement for them. Although Armani does escape out of it. Snoot a little bit slow to jump at that opportunity. Yeah, the roaches are annoying because, you know, you can't look everywhere at once, and so if you're kind of dealing with this attack over here, and you're maybe not paying attention, you don't know those roaches burrowed, you just assume they died, and so it can always be kind of super useful to kind of burrow and try and get away, hide in a corner, because then suddenly you come back in again, your opponent has to respond once more, and all the rest of it. 
Stringler has defended nicely and now he's got this Overseer Patrol in this position which means it's hard to bile down and it will see Roaches trying to hit his natural. And Snoot takes a 30 army supply lead, he's once again down on workers, up in army similar to that last game. And the Lurkers starting to come into play here, Snoot yet to kind of go in towards his own, um, his hive. And to move in towards that tech, probably because he doesn't realise it's Lurkers yet. You can see the Corrosive Bowers dropping down once again. Does he still have the Infestors alive? He does. He's going to push on in. He's just going to try and fight this Snoot. Okay, now he maybe realises this wasn't quite a smart decision. Backs away. To be fair, so far his Roaches are just low on health. He will pack, uh, pop up here again. Nice Fungal Grove. The Corrosive Bowers to kind of come on top of that. Will make up for the Lurker damage he just took. And will very much so keep him in this for a while longer here. Those Infestors. Deadly Assassins in the ground. I mean... Yes, they're, they're, it's kind of, uh, you know, they wouldn't get charged for murder, but they'd get charged for accessory to murder because they, they don't kill much, but they kind of lock the units in position so that they will die to the corrosive bars or just from being caught out of position and unable to move away from it. They are pretty deadly, and uh, Snoot showing us why just then, getting a great set of bars on top of the fungal units. As more roaches continue to roll on down the right hand side of the map, we're going to be seeing roaches, ravages, and festers still just gathering up here from Snoot. And these lurkers, roaches, and ravages are going to be moving up this ramp to see what they can do as well. Going to try and keep on harassing here. Some corrosive bowels going to get thrown on down. And we're going to see the lurkers taking a little bit of damage, so a little bit of damage being dealt. A queen gets uh, picked off to the top side here, too. Again, Snoot so far is uh, doing a pretty good job defending throughout and defending, being in all the right locations. Problem is, Armani's starting to take advantages. You know, he has had more workers for a while. That income lead is starting to be uh, chipped away at, as Snoot did add him a few more drones to kind of even things out. And it is only four bases apiece for now, but the fifth base from Armani does begin to build, and that's a position Snoot can't quite justify trying to hold just yet. As we are going to see this overseer here from Snoot, will spot this roach attack of Armani. As we see, uh oh, uh oh, the lurkers are going to burrow on the roach warren. And on the Evo Chamber as well, well this is a pretty huge deal because how on earth do you push up this ramp? Well, I'll give you a clue, you kind of just don't. He's trying to burrow up the ramp, but that's not going to happen either because there's an Overseer here. Snoot now pulling around the side to deal with this attack at the same time. Mamani though is just all over the place. And he is playing so, so well to just outposition Snoot and to take advantage. Snoot is now forced to make Hydralisks because he doesn't have a Roach Warren anymore. And uh, obviously that's a little bit awkward. Now that's going to be a nice fungal growth there. He's going to throw infested Terrans down, but how long are they really going to last? Snoot knows it. GG's out. Armani has a huge bank behind this. While the supplies were kind of even when Snoot typed out GG, 